Across the country, our uh, criminal justice systems on the local and state level, our you know uh, police departments, our jail systems, much in need of reform in New York is certainly uh, not free from that as well. Uh, now there is a new plan to potentially uh, mix up uh, the jail system in New York City, uh, but is it actually the direction that the city should go in? We are joined now by New York City Council Member Jimmy Van Bramer uh, to break this down. Jimmy, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. Uh, glad to have you here. So um, there's this new uh, borough-based jail plan. Can you tell me about that and and how that would be different than the current system? Well, look, we all agree that Rikers Island needs to be shut down. It's a human rights atrocity. But what Mayor de Blasio and some want to do is replace it by building four mega jails with uh, several thousand new beds and new cages for predominantly people of color, spending well over $10 billion to do so. When in fact, we should be closing Rikers Island for sure, but investing over $10 billion in things that people actually need, that communities actually deserve, and that will actually prevent us from pumping $10 billion back into uh, this horrible prison industrial complex and uh, a system of, of even deeper mass incarceration. So my question is, what's the alternative? If uh, we everyone agrees Rikers should be shut down absolutely, and if this new idea is a bad idea, what should happen as far as a jail? Well, look, we've got to pursue decarceration. We've got to actually continue the work that we've just started doing. Look, the population at Rikers has already gone down 35% in the last five years. That's before we actually eliminate cash bail. That's before we actually reform radically pre-sentencing, pre-trial reforms, alternatives to incarceration. Uh, how about we continue to do the work uh, that's actually just beginning when progressives talk about criminal justice reform and driving down that population uh, even further. If we invested $10 billion uh, into affordable housing, education, uh, uh, mental health services, uh, job training, and other skills, uh, as well as continue to pursue aggressively a uh, decarceral platform, I think you'll see the population drastically reduced. And when you're doing that work, building several thousand new cages uh, to put predominantly black and brown uh, young people into uh, flies in the face of why we're closing Rikers in the first place. It isn't okay, uh, nor does it make sense to me, to replace one cage uh, with a slightly nicer cage when in fact we can actually talk about eliminating cages in the long run. Right, and I, I understand that everything that you just said, I think I completely agree with, but you still wouldn't get the number to zero. So where would, you would still need some sort of facility. What would be the alternative? Well, there, there are facilities. Uh, and uh, if you got to a place where you had actually driven the population down to where I think you could drive it down, uh, but acknowledge that there might be some folks who still need to be remanded, uh, there could be and there are places uh, and we should talk about where uh, that remand should take place. But I think we are coming at this from a place of defeat mm -hmm. and actually uh, expanding the prison industrial complex if we're saying uh, we'll never get to a number that is low enough. So therefore, we need to build uh, several thousand new cages. It, it doesn't make sense. If the defining issue of our time is criminal justice reform, and if we're committed to actually addressing uh, centuries of racism and, and structural uh, injustice, then we get to this place where we agree that Rikers needs to be closed, and I do too. Uh, but the solution is investing over $10 billion in four new mega jails. Uh, that to me is not visionary in terms of where we need to go in the future. 
Uh, Jimmy, so uh, really fast, I know that the vote is coming up in just a couple of days on that borough based plan. Um, at this point, what, what do you think the odds are that it passes? Well, you know, it's, it's going to be a vote, I, I believe, of conscience, and I hope that is what it is for everybody here at the council. Um, look, I know the mayor and others are pushing very hard. Uh, and I look, I know that some members mm -hmm. genuinely believe that this is the right thing to do. Uh, uh, my hope is, is that we continue to have uh, this discussion, talk about how immigrant communities are rising up in New York City, saying this is not where we should be going, that these cages will be places where ICE can prey upon immigrant communities and vulnerable communities. And uh, listen to the words of uh, Congresswoman Ocasio-Cortez and Tiffany Caban, who I was proud to support for district attorney, and so many other progressives who are saying that this is not what we need to do. If we are actually committed uh, to ending mass incarceration, then we've got to use this opportunity. This is a vote where we all have to actually take stock of uh, the history of this country, our own personal histories, uh, our own uh, white privilege uh, and, and do the right thing and actually uh, take a radical step uh, to end mass incarceration. So I, I, I know that many people are saying that it will pass, uh, that they, they have the votes to pass this, uh, but it's uh, four days away and four days in politics is an eternity. <laughs> so I'm hoping that uh, the rest of will continue to organize and mobilize against this. And and let's see what happens on Thursday. Uh, Jimmy Van Bramer, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you for watching this clip from the Damage Report. For more content from the show and access to TYT Network members only exclusives, go to tyt.com slash Brooke. Wait, no, it's tyt.com slash John. Go to tyt.com slash John to sign up.